So today we're going to be taking notes on multiplying fractions and whole numbers and mixed numbers. And the rules for multiplying fractions is way easier than the rules for adding them. We don't have to worry about the denominators. Remember in fractions we couldn't add them until they had like denominators so we had to keep converting things. This is way easier. We're pretty much just multiplying across the numerator and the denominator. So if you would write down this problem, negative 12 times 3 over 4. So we have a few things to remember here. Let's make our triangle on the side to remind us we are multiplying positive and negative numbers. So those rules still apply. I have a negative 12 and a positive 3 fourths. So if I'm covering up a positive and a negative, what's my answer going to be? Negative. Right. So let's just take care of that first, and then we'll deal with the multiplication. We multiply numerators and denominators. There's an invisible one with that negative 12, and it's underneath it. Do you guys remember that math fact that all whole numbers are really a fraction over 1? So now I can take 12 times 3, and I get 36. 1 times 4 and I get 4 but as we know we need to reduce things to simplest terms and negative 36 divided by 4 is going to give us a negative 9. So let's go back and think about what that really means. I had a whole negative 12 times 3 fourths Notice my answer is less than what we started with. At least the number 9 is less than 12. But negative 12 is lower on the number line than our negative 9, isn't it? So we just want to look at our facts and see, does that make sense with what we did? I had negative 12 times 3 gets me negative 36. 1 times 4 is 4. If I'm dividing these, I end up with my negative 9. Let's try this example. One-third times three-eighths. Again, with multiplying fractions, we don't need to worry about common denominators. We just multiply straight across. But in this case, I see a little trick we can use. If I have a number in the numerator that's also in the denominator, I, know that I can cancel these out. I'll show you why that works after. We'll just do this a second time. Now I have 1 times nothing, and three, the 3 down here got crossed out, so this just becomes 1 8. Really what I did by doing that is I simplified first. If I hadn't done that, I would have ended up with 3 over 24. 3 over 24 can be simplified by dividing 3 from both, and I end up with 1 over 8. So I really just simplified it before I multiplied instead of simplifying it after. Two different ways of getting to the same place, and you can choose whichever way you like. How about 3 fifths times a negative 1 fourth? Remember, we often use parentheses when there's a negative number following another operation symbol. We just don't want to lose that that's a negative number. So I'm back to thinking about a positive number times a negative number gives me a negative answer, right? And I'm going to multiply straight across. 3 times 1 is 3. 5 times 4 is 20. That cannot be reduced anymore. So that's our answer. Oh, I should box this one too, just so it looks nice and clean. There we go. Except I crossed it out on accident. All right. Now let's do some examples with mixed numbers. If I have two fifths times one and two thirds. Sorry about that. I started putting a fraction line where the one is. 
unlike when we're adding and we can just take the whole numbers and put them together, we need to convert this mixed number to an improper fraction. So we're going to do 3 times 1 plus 2, plus two and we're going to rewrite this as 2 fifths times 3 times 1 is 3 five plus period. 2 is 5. I get 5 over 3. I can multiply straight across, but what do you guys notice? You can divide. We can, we can simplify this before we multiply. We can cancel out those fives. And that just leaves us with two thirds. Next example, we have two mixed numbers, four and one fifth times two and one seventh. I need to rewrite this. Instead of having two mixed numbers, I need to rewrite them as two improper fractions. So I get 21 fifths times, seven times two is 14, plus one is 15. So 15 over seven. That looks like it's gonna be some pretty big numbers, doesn't it? But I can actually do some canceling here. Yeah, I, I'm seeing it, and you will too in just a moment. Here we had 5 and 5, and that was nice and easy, right? Here I have 5 and 15. If I'm going to divide this 5 out, can't I also divide a 5 from here? And that would leave me with 3. Because I'm really looking at the factors of, those, of that number. I'm really saying this is 3 times 5, and I'm going to cancel the 5. And what math fact do we know about 7 and 21? They are multiple. 21 is really the same as saying 3 times 7, isn't it? So I can cancel, cancel. And now there's nothing underneath, but on top I have a 3 times 3. This equals 9. It looks a little bit messy, but it's a lot easier in the long run than doing 21 times 15, which would have been 315 over 35. And then what would you guys have done? Simplify. Divide by five. Then you would have divided by seven, hopefully, right? <coughs> so that canceling before you multiply can really save you from dealing with some large numbers on the numerator or denominator of your fraction. Okay, last example. Let's do negative three and three fifths times one and one twelfth. <coughs> we have to be careful that we don't lose that this is a negative times a positive because we're going to be doing quite a bit of steps in between. But just looking at that, our answer is going to become what kind of a number? Negative. It's going to be a negative answer. So here I've got 5 times 3 is 15, plus 3 is 18. So this equals negative 18 fifths times 13 twelfths. <coughs> It's not really obvious, but there is something I can cancel out here. I'm going to change this 12 to be 2 times 6. And I'm going to change the 18 to be 3 times 6. <coughs> what can I then cancel out? The multiple of 6. I can cancel out the 6s. Then I have 3 times 13 giving me 39, 5 times 2 giving me 10. I can leave this as an improper fraction, or I can show that this is 3 and 9 tenths. And that's, oh, thank you, Riley. Yes, it's a negative. I forgot it, even though I reminded us to be careful of forgetting it. 
Okay, so we have three and nine tenths with a negative or a negative 39 over 10. So you guys are going to do some practice today on problems like this. It's on page 188 in your book. Numbers 28 to 51. 